Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we need to understand as we are preparing to upload our first uh, HTML pages, which we are going to be doing for homework this weekend. Uh, there's quite a bit in here. Uh, please take your time, uh, press pause, listen to things again, make sure you understand what's going on, and you should be okay. And if you have questions, obviously, uh, let me know. So I want you to imagine that you are on your computer. It could be a desktop or a laptop. Here it's on a desktop. I'm on a desktop currently. And you have internet access, Wi-Fi access, of course. And you are going to go to a web page. Let's say you're going to the um, SJU uh, website. Okay. And you go to sju.edu and you click enter. What happens? What happens in that moment uh, when you're going there? Well, what happens is that your computer via the wireless cable, and this happens also when it's wired into the wall, uh, sends out a little signal or connects via the cable, in one case to a wireless router that might be at the top of your ceiling or some, someplace else, or somewhere that's in your wall. It sends out a signal via a group of wires, tubes, cables, rat hubs, and a variety of other different uh, hard pieces of hardware and eventually connects to something called a server, which I draw like this. Although a server is essentially just a kind of computer that is designed to give people the ability to access information. Okay, So this is your server. And this might be the SJU, uh, the SJU server. And again, a server is a kind of computer uh, that provides the opportunity for people to access information. So when your computer, back to where I was, uh, when your computer sends out this request and you're on your you're in your browser and you say you want to go to the sju.edu, a little request gets put out um, and goes along all these different wires and so on until it reaches the sju server and the computers ask the, qu the server a question, can I see or can I display the page that the person wants to display? And if the answer is yes, what happens is it sends the information about that page along those little, that path. It could take a different path back to your computer and then it displays it on the screen and everybody is happy. Um, what's fascinating is that it doesn't actually send the files as one large file. It breaks it down into little bits. It's called packet switching. It breaks it into little bits and it sends it along the path and it can take all the little bits can take their own little paths to get to where it needs to be. And they're programmed when they're broken up, the file's broken up to say, okay, you're the first part, second part, third part, fourth part, fifth part, so on and so forth. And then when it gets back to your computer, it reconfigures it. Uh, occasionally, when you're on the web, I'm sure you've seen, you get to this question, it gets, you send, try to view a web page, and it gets to the server, and you ask it a question, and it says no. And you're not allowed to see it. And you get displayed over here something like a 404 error. And what that means is that you are not allowed to display, see the different files that exist on that server. Because servers are set up in a way to have things that are public and things that are private. And we, as we're browsing the web, see things that are public. When people hack into a server, they see the things that are private. Okay. Now, just like on your computers, servers have folders and servers have files that exist 
within those folders. Okay, and we're going to be setting up on our servers a similar uh, folders and files, just as we're going to be doing on our computer as well. Okay, so this is what happens when we access a web page via our computer. Our computer sends out that signal through the various hardware that makes up the internet. Okay. And the internet is a system of computers, servers, wires, routers, hubs, access points. Um, it is the hardware that we use that connects, is all interconnected. The World Wide Web, often which is used interchangeably with the Internet, is something that is different. That is a system of documents that exist and travel over the Internet. Okay, so the web is the files and the internet is the hardware, okay, the servers, the wires and routers, and the computers themselves, your cell phones, your tablets, those all are, get connected to the internet. The documents that you see when you're on a browser or on your phone are part of the World Wide Web. And there are a lot of different systems that exist on the, uh, on the Internet. There's the app system, which is different. There's the email system, which is different. And there are a couple other ones as well. And we all want these to act, act, you know, get things very quickly, like in a snap. And we get upset if it takes a little while, long, little while to get to you. Um, but this is the basic setup, and it's important to understand this concept that when we are browsing the web or we're looking at a web page or looking at a video on YouTube, we are actually seeing something that exists on a server that is being transmitted either streaming in real time or as a static document like a PDF file or a uh, HTML file. Now this is important because we need to understand what is happening when we are coding our own web pages because we interact with the servers and our computer and some other uh, things as well. Okay, so let me get to that point here. Let's start again. Okay. So right now I'm going to start with the servers. We've just created or updated our accounts on the reclaim hosting server. Okay, the reclaim hosting server right here. Now, when you get an account on a server, uh, a, a, a business or that ho has that host servers and host domains and host URLs, you are essentially renting space on their server. And so when you signed up for your account, you signed up, signed up for a certain amount of space on their computer, on their server. And I want you to imagine that it's just like renting a room on an apartment. There are other people who have their things on the server and um, they store their stuff on there, and you have your stuff on there, and, and everybody's got their stuff on there, and it's very exciting. And when a year goes up and you have to renew, it's like your lease is up. If you don't renew it, you move on, you, you get evicted, right? You get kicked out. Um, and this is what happens when you don't renew your URL, which is what many of you did. You lost your space on their server. Okay. So each of you has your own individual little home on the reclaim hosting server and that and that's really just nice to know that there that's there for you and you know unlike an apartment they actually back up the work that you have on there okay now when you are 
on your, when you're in your server, they have created a folder for you called, I'm going to make this nice and big so I can try to write inside of here, called public HTML. And this is your public HTML folder. And every single thing that you put inside this folder is available for the public to see. Okay. That means if somebody if, is looking for a file that exists inside this folder and they're browsing their web and they go to this, this will be available to the public. Um, and we're going to be using this public HTML folder this semester uh, for your for your work. You can also use your Reclaim hosting server to back up other documents and put in other folders that you make uh, as a way to back things up and transfer your files from one place to the next, as I'm going to show you in a minute. Just like you would if you're saving something to the cloud, the Google Cloud, or to Dropbox, or any other uh, backup system. I use something called Spider Oak. Um, that's all private. We're going to be using a public HTML folder. So on our computers, on our computer, we are going to be using a piece of software called Brackets. And this is on your computer. Spelled that wrong. Brackets. Okay. Could be your laptop, could be a desktop, uh, whatever. And this is where we are going to do our coding. And so on. This is where we're going to be doing all of our coding. Okay. Because the coding is the language that the browsers, the computer browsers, understand for displaying a web page. And we're going to be starting out with HTML. Okay. Now we are going to be saving all of our documents that we create in brackets. And all of the documents that we're going to be using for class, including our images, uh, we're going to be putting them in a folder that I'm going to, that I'm going to ask you to create for web design. Um, I'd like you to put that on your computer somewhere where you'll be able to uh, find it, um, being organized is one of the most important parts of succeeding in this class is being organized with your files and your file structures. And so we're going to be putting every single thing that we create uh, into this web design folder. Now, when we create in brackets, uh, the first file that we make, the first file that we're going to be making is called the index.html file. This is how I draw files. This is indicating that it's sitting inside of this folder. And it is going to be called index.html. It's called index.html because browsers look for that file name as the default file in a folder. They always look for that. 
It's just the way that the system is set up. Okay. We use the .html extension because it is a HTML file, just like in a Word doc, you have the .docx or PDF, you have .pdf or JPEG, you have .jpg. Uh, this is the extension that you have. Okay. Now, there are a few things that are important for best practices that we're going to talk about. And you'll notice that I am doing everything in all lowercase. It is extremely important to maintain a capitalization system, and it is most user-friendly if they are all lowercase, because that is what people are expecting. It's very rare for you, if you think about it, to see URLs that have capital letters uh, in them, not very often. Okay. So when we code our page in HTML, our HTML document, we save my pencil out here. We save into we do a little save and right like this. So I have to start. We save it into this folder. And then we have our index.html file here. If we want to add more code to our um, to our document we go back into our document we can add a little bit of, a little bit more and so on obviously I'm not typing all that much here <laughs> and then we resave it over what we just what we just wrote okay so we're constantly going back to brackets and doing a little typing and saving and typing and saving and so on and so forth um, it is always important to continue to save your work. Uh, that's another best practice, which we'll think about. So the first best practice is being very organized with your, with your work. We'll put our best practices down here on the side so we have them up on the screen. Um, be organized. Be organized, all lowercase, all lowercase file names, save often, also very often. Okay. So these best practices are really essential for succeeding in this class and when you're when you're coding. So we're going to set up this system and it's very important, like I said, to make this web design folder so all your files can live in there. It is going to help you so much. Okay. So the question now is how do we get this file? This is the file. This is our web page. This is the thing that we've been working on for two hours and we love it, and it's going to be the greatest web page ever, and you're going to be like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I just designed this. This is so cool. And But how do we get it so that it is on the web? How do we get this file so that... How do we get this file so that it lives in this public HTML folder and so people will be able to see it when they go to your URL, like buildwolfsju.com, or so on and so forth. And the key is we are going to be using um, a piece of software, which you have already should have downloaded, called FileZilla. That looks like this. This is an FTP software, okay? And FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. Okay. Okay. So we are going to, and this, the reason why it's called file transfer protocol 
is because it transfers files from your computer to the server. And what happens is, and I'm going to, you'll see this live in another, uh, later in the video, or in another video, we'll see how long this gets, um, that on this side of the computer, on this side of the uh, FTP is the, your computer on the left side. And on the right side, on the right side is the stuff, the reclaim hosting server. Okay, your server space, your server space. Okay, so the left side over here mirrors or replicates your computer, okay? All the files that you've ever had on your computer, or, and you still have, I'm sorry, are on your computer, you will be able to see and gain access to over here. This side over here is the server, okay? So just as, because we are able to see our files, uh, the one file that, folder and files that we're going to be looking for and doing work with uh, this semester is the web design folder, okay, and the first file that we're going to have and do stuff with is this index.html file. So we have our HTML. And I'm taking my time here, whoa, so that you can sort of understand what I'm doing. I'm repeating myself often. If it's redundant, I apologize, but I want to make sure everybody understands. So this is our public.html folder. It mirrors this folder that's on your computer. It's in your documents or wherever you store it. Maybe your desktop, some people like to put it on there. Um, and we also have our index.html. Change that. Oops. I made a mistake. Do -do -do -do. I should have said that this is our web design. Please excuse us. This is our web design folder. You probably caught that already, and you said, Billy, you screwed up. No, it happens. It's 10 o'clock. It's late. Kids are in school all day. Everybody, the only one at home. My wife was working today. It's been a day. Anyway, so this is the web design folder. And inside is, it, is our index.html. And so, because we know that this replicates the server, and we know that we have a public HTML file folder on that server, I know that on in my FTP software, I am also going to see the public HTML. folder in there, okay? I know that that's going to be there because I'm connected to it. I'm going to show you how that all works. Okay. So the computer, we see our web design folder, and we're going to have all the contents of our web design uh, class, our index file, when we start creating our about.html and contact, all portfolio.html will be creating, creating quite soon. That will all be in here. So what do we do in order to now get this file to be inside of this public HTML folder? All we do is click on it, 
Oops. All we do, sorry about that. We click on it and we drag it across onto this side. And then, like magic, the file will appear right here in this side. Do -do. Voila, we bring it over and it will exist over here on our server. Okay? And it will now also exist on, on this, you know, on the server. Uh, you know, it will be in this space also. So what we then do is we go to our browser, and I'm going to draw that down here. We, on our computer, we open up our browser. This is our little address bar. And we're using Firefox uh, Developer Edition. And I want you to get used to using that because that's the one we need to be using for coding. And we go to your URL. Whoa. <laughs> And you click enter, and you see your changes, what you have just coded. Okay. Whatever you just coded, it shows up. Okay, But maybe something is wrong, and you're not really sure. So you have to go back to your uh, you, well, let's move around. you have to go back to your code, you re-enter your code, you save, you re-upload the file, and then you come into here and you click refresh. Not sure why I'm type writing it like this, but that's what's happening. You click refresh, and hopefully the changes will be made. This process of code, I'll type this out, I'll make it a different color. Code. Code save upload. Sorry about that. And refresh. is going to be your mantra this semester. Code, save, upload, refresh. Code, save, upload, refresh. And if we were in class right now, I'd have you actually have you chanting this out loud. Because this is what we do. We code in brackets, we save it, we upload it, we refresh the browser, we see what changes need to be made, and then we go back to the coding. And the coding can be just changing one minor in, in thing, like adding a period that you forgot, or fixing a bracket that was missing, or deleting a sentence, or adding an image. It can be something small. Uh, coding happens in bits and pieces. It's not like we sit down and we code an entire page and it's done. Mm -mm. Constant little changes, you know, nuance changes here and there. Code, save, upload, refresh. This is the mantra and the process 
that we are going to be getting used to. It is the workflow, as I'm going to talk about. When we have our individual meetings, I'm going to ask you how, you, how you're doing with your workflow. Um, and eventually, this is going to become second nature to you. It takes a few weeks to get used to this process. Um, I recommend writing this down, having it in front of you while you are coding, and so that you remember this process. I am going to always ask you, um, did you save when you did your code when you're having problems? Did you save it? First question. Did you upload it? Sometimes people go from the coding and the saving to the refreshing and they forget to do the upload. Sometimes they do the coding, the uploading, and the refreshing, but they forget to save it. Sometimes students will code, save, upload, but then forget to refresh. Or they are using a, a browser other than Firefox Developer Edition, which does not work well with constant refreshing. Uh, Chrome, for example, excellent browser, not very good when you're developing, creating web pages because it doesn't like the constant refreshing. The cache gets in the way. Safari, ugh, atrocious. Don't even go near it when you're coding. Uh, we always are using Firefox Developer Edition. Always using Firefox Developer Edition. All right. um, so this process, code, save, upload, refresh. Code, save, upload, refresh. Okay. That's that's our that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing in class. That's this is the workflow for coding, and we use these three these these files uh, to do uh, that work. We use we use brackets. We use FileZilla. We use Firefox Developer Edition. Oops, Firefox Developer Edition for this work. Those three software applications are going to be open for you the entire semester as we're working through. Okay. Now, um, if you have questions about this process, it will become more familiar as you're doing it, as you're going through the actual coding uh, and doing this. It will become more familiar. Um, I will be adding another video, because this one's 32 minutes long already, and that's long enough, um, that talks about how to uh, get your FTP account set up properly, and how to use and get going with FileZilla. It will also introduce you to brackets. Okay, This is more about the process itself. Okay? So, if you have questions, which I'm sure you do, please note them, okay? Hold on to them for now. And as you're beginning to work through it, we'll be able to see how successful you are on your first runs. This week coming up, we're going to be meeting individually to talk about uh, how things are going, okay, with, with the homework for this week, which is going to be asking you to code save, upload, refresh, etc. etc. Okay. Please make sure that you are also following these best practices. These are extraordinarily important. And uh, we will be adding to them uh, throughout the semester. Um, okay, so if you have questions, jot them down for now. Watch the next video and in, in the process where I'm introducing to you to brackets and how to get access to your FTP accounts. And take a risk, try everything out, make sure you're following the instructions exactly as they're there. Okay. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you're able to do and have a great day.